Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to my channel. And today we are gonna be doing what's in my Linux. Similar to what's in my bag or what's in my PC, but it's in my Linux. Yeah, anyway, let's get started. Now this is a video that I want to make for quite some time now, but I keep changing and formatting this computer so the applications don't stay normal. I keep erasing or installing different types of applications for testing purposes. But right now it's have been settled for quite some time now because I turned this into my streaming setup. So if you guys want to watch me on Twitch, I'll leave a link right here. And while I'm mentioning about Twitch, also join my Discord because I have a bunch of stuff going on there, especially the recent Quake 3 tournaments that we've been having. So check out my Discord for that as well. Anyway, to get started, I am running Ubuntu 20.04. And the last time you guys seen it is probably on my stream where I changed over my desktop, but I'll be going over through that right now. So what I have right here is just some fancy wallpaper from Wallpaper Flare, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. And this is my GNOME setup with Dash to Panel. And this is similar to some of the setups that I've done with my Pop! OS, actually very, very similar, but there, a lot of things has updated and changed. Uh, main thing that I do use now is this program called uh, OS Power. Well, this is not a program, it's actually a widget that you could install or extension, a GNOME extension that you could install, which is able to control my Ryzen 7 1700 and I could set the speeds and everything that I want. And the other thing that I usually use is my um, caffeine, which keeps the PC running. The bottom part is my dash to panel and my start menu is the arc menu. So now the arc menu actually updated so you could get so many different styles. Like I could go through here. It keeps centering because I have two screens right now. But yeah, uh, you can see that there's modern layouts, touch layouts, simple layouts, launcher layouts. So whatever you want to choose. Right now I'm on the traditional layout, but if I want to go into a modern layout, it'll show you what type of style there is. And as far as theme goes, I believe I am using, I don't remember. Okay, let me uh, tweaks. Let's see what theme I'm using right now. The blue Maya, Maya. And then I'm using, uh, as far as applications, I'm using Ubuntu dark blue. So it kind of mixes, mixes and matches over here. All right, moving on. As far as the applications I currently use on this setup, um, let's go from top to bottom actually. So, nope, not frequently yet. For accessories, let's see. We got the normal extensions, file, uh, Raspberry Pi imager, uh, Visual Studio Code, that's what I use to program my stuff in. Um, going over to games, I don't really install much games on this machine. I do have Steam, so you obviously see my other channel and I've installed Steam on this guy. As far as graphics go, I have Flameshot, the regular image viewer that comes with uh, Ubuntu 2004, Krita, Lib Libre Office Draw, and Shotwell. Mainly what I use is Krita. Krita is a program that's very, very similar to Photoshop, so I, I kind of could relate to how to operate this. So most of the time when I make thumbnails on this machine, this is the program that I'm using, which is Krita. And as far as Flameshot goes, you guys were the ones that recommended it because I did that deep in Linux uh, desktop review, and I really like that uh, screenshot program. So you guys were saying check out Flameshot, and man, Flameshot is really good. It's sim very, very similar to um, deep in screenshot. So yeah, you basically could, um, well, take a screenshot. There's like different things you could do. And then there's this bottom menu that you could like edit the picture or save it or upload it to a cloud. Basically, it's very similar to deep in screenshot, but a lot more. Now, let's close this program out. Moving on. Um, I don't think I really have to explain the image viewer or Libre Draw. Uh, Shotwell is another program that comes default in this installation that I don't really use. It's mainly just Creator and Flameshot. Uh, internet wise, I got Discord, uh, Firefox, web browser, Remina. Remina is by far the most important program I use on a daily basis because I remote desktop into everything. And in order to connect to the remote desktop sessions, I use Remina and it saves all my sessions, IP addresses, and it has different protocols. It's, it's just, it's like the M remote NG for Windows. It's basically has the connection to all. Um, remote viewer, I don't use that. Steam, why is Steam on it? I guess it is, internet. Uh, Thunderbolt mail, I don't use. I don't use the mail on here. I just use uh, Gmail, so I just log online and transmission, which I don't really use this to torrent. If I was to use the torrent uh, program, I would use Deluge. So that's on the internet side. 
I usually do have Chromium installed, but on this machine, I still don't. But normally I do have like multiple browsers. Moving on, Office, um, Home Bank is the thing that I would use most of the time. Now, Home Bank is, let me see, I don't have anything here, I cleared it out, but basically it's um, for your finances. Uh, you income, ex um, expenses, stuff like that. So most of my YouTube stuff, I use this program called Home Bank and I keep track of all my income and expenses through this program. It's a really easy program. It comes with gr cool graphs and stuff like that. So check it out. They actually have a website. Now, next up on the office supplies, I have uh, the normal library office. I don't have Microsoft Office installed in this because this machine doesn't really need it. So I just have my Home Bank installed on this guy. And then programming. Uh, Doc Station is a program I'm currently playing around with, which allows you to control docs remotely. Uh, and it comes with this really cool grid. If you wanna Google it, check it out, but I am gonna do a video on Doc Station. That's why I have it pre-installed right now. Another thing is Visual Studio Code. That's uh, my editor of choice because it's actually very easy to use. It's, I've programmed on, um, Microsoft Visual Studios for a long time and I'm very familiar with their styling of code and Visual Studio code just makes that really neat. Especially the fact that you got debuggers and everything in here with like Python and stuff. It works out very, very well. So I do like using Visual Studio code. I would check it out if, you, if I were you. Um, moving on, past programming, sound and audio. Audacity, I, I mean, you can't complain with that. Audacity is your program of choice for audio stuff, it's free. Uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio, that's uh, my video editor program that I use. And I did buy the studio version because it allows for MP4 import onto Linux. But um, needless to say, it's not perfect because it still doesn't have AAC audio support, which my video cameras export in. So I would still have to transcode it using FFmpeg to WAV audio, which is fine. It's much quicker than having to transcode an MP4 into a completely different format to import into here. So I don't really use most of the studio features. I use most more, more of the free, like free could just last me forever. I don't really need to buy the studio, but because it has the Linux support with the MP4, I decided to buy it and I've been using it. Uh, OBS Studio, that's exactly what I'm using right now to record everything. So I don't need to explain that, but that's literally what I would use for streaming and video editing and I mean, video recording and everything. And then you got uh, your normal VLC media player, rhythm box I don't really use. Uh, system tools. Um, as far as system tool goes, I don't think I added something. Oh, virtual machine manager. Uh, if you see my live stream on Twitch, I showed you guys how to install virtual machine manager and have multiple OSs. As a matter of fact, quick tip, I was actually doing our desktop review and it's uh, for Arch Linux. Arch Linux came out with a new version that I was playing with called Web Dads, which I am planning to do a review, but it's so buggy on QEMU that I couldn't finish that video up. So that will be coming as well. But for now, yeah, that's buggy. Then um, as far as utility goes, one of the things that I do install uh, for most Ubuntu installs or anything that's Debian based is this disk uses analyzer because this, this is amazing. It tells you exactly where you're using most of your space in and all that stuff. So it helps manage your hard drives. So I usually use that or the disk uh, tool is it disks yeah this this is another known program called disks and this allows you to format and wipe and all that other stuff just like um disk manager on windows it it makes it so much easier for you to manage your disk through here so that's what i usually use and i think that is about it as far as m most of the programs that i use um yeah i mean as far as like an editor wise goes i don't i'm not really too picky i stick with whatever text editor there, there is um, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I don't really have anything special as far as like text editors. I like Nano and a lot of people say stuff about Nano. Why don't you use Vim? I could use Vim, but, uh, or if it's like a normal application here, I would usually use whatever it comes with like text editor or leaf pad. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, most of the time, if I need to code, I usually go into Visual Studio Code. So as far as the text editor goes, I just copy and paste text. That's what I mainly do. So it doesn't really bother me what I have in there. Um, I think that's about it. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a quick rundown of what my current setup is on the streaming machine. And I will do like another one possibly on my main desktop as far as Linux goes, but I have a completely different operating system and a lot of different apps. But I could do another video on that. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, 
hack till it hurts.